We know that the sign of the Son of Man, in part, will be the return of planets to the vicinity of Earth in a blaze of cometary glory and with attendant catastrophes. But that still leaves several questions unresolved. First, which planets are those which will comprise the sign? In an earlier video, we identified three returning planets which would be seen by mankind and would constitute the grand sign of the Son of Man. We did provide some evidence to support the claim, but we'll now provide a stronger basis and a more detailed scenario. The Revelation of John describes the arrival of the three planets in a chronological order. The first to arrive will be Mars, followed by Venus and Saturn in that order. Joseph Smith repeatedly stated that one of the returning planets constituting the sign of the Son of Man would be the city of Enoch. Of the three, Saturn is the likely candidate. When these three planets have fully made their approach to Earth, there will be catastrophes in heaven. These are the woes and calamities described by John in his revelation. But these are not the sign of the Son of Man per se. The sign is seen only by all flesh after the calamities. What is the sign? What will the world see? The orientation of temples and sacred structures to the east towards the rising sun, especially of early LDS temples, suggests that one or all of the returning planets will approach Earth from the east and become visible over the horizon, as does our Sun today. Yet, this is not how John describes their return in his revelation. The star called Wormwood descends from above and does not appear over the eastern horizon. This same planet, Mars, now called Apollyon, also falls from heaven. The second planet, Venus, described as a woman clothed with the sun, simply appears. No direction is given. The woman's position, however, was above the earth, not to the east. The great red dragon stood before the woman in heaven and cast the stars of heaven down to earth. The third planet, Saturn, called the New Jerusalem, like Mars, descends from above and does not approach from the east. Now, clearly, something is amiss here. If these planetary signs descend from above and not come from the east, then what is signified by the temples facing east in anticipation of the Son of Man? And why does Ezekiel describe the glory of the Lord shining from the way of the east? In order to answer these questions, we must first answer the previous question. What will the world see? Fortunately, the scriptures provide a clear answer. In section 88, the olive leaf, the Lord informs Joseph Smith that the great sign will be seen immediately after the angels appear, flying in the midst of heaven, crying to the inhabitants of the earth to repent and prepare the way for the coming bridegroom. In another revelation, the Lord again described an angel in the midst of heaven crying to the world to prepare the way of the Lord, for the bridegroom is coming. But this time, the Lord identifies the sign that immediately follows the angel's cries. It is the Lamb of God who will stand upon the mound of Olivet and the ocean, upon the isles of the sea and the land of Zion.
The apostle described the great sign in this manner. 